The Edible Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Edible Bean School. On this episode, we're going to look at variety development. Um, How long does it take to develop a new edible bean variety? What plant characteristics are plant breeders focusing on? You know, from yield and quality to end-user acceptance, there's a lot to consider here. And to help us navigate the variety development pipeline, today I'm pleased to welcome Hensel Co-op Seed and Research Manager, Paul Cornwell. Hi, Paul. Hey, great to have you on the Edible Bean School. Hey, Bern. It's great to be back. Hey, um, Paul, let's kick this off with, with a snapshot of that variety development process. You know, how long does it take to move through the, you know, variety selection to certified seed production and planting on farm? Right. Yeah, Bern. you know, the quick, dirty answer that we always say is eight to 10 years, right? So, from crossing that plant back in the greenhouse, say, for example, in 2015 at the University of Guelph. We have a couple new exciting releases coming out next year, um, which is, you know, 2025 for seed production. So you're quickly into that nine years. We've been growing the seed in Idaho since 2022, but the seed increases take a few years to get through. So, yeah, eight to ten years is is uh, is over in a in, in a quick fashion. Now, Paul, I want to talk big picture in a moment and, you know, and what you need to consider when developing varieties. But first, let's talk short term and, uh, and what growers can expect to see emerging from the pipeline in the next year or two and, and where those varieties fit. Right. Yeah, we're pretty excited. We have a few new varieties actually coming out next year for seed production. So in Ontario, we'll be doing seed increases of two white beans or navy beans if you're in Western Canada, uh, blast and steam. So two navy beans, blast and steam that are uh, look really great in the yield trials and we're excited to bring them to the Ontario market and the Manitoba market. We also have a black bean, Umbra. This is kind of exciting because it's a black sauce bean. So it's the first Ontario bred black sauce bean, which the market is really demanding to give us a nice thick black sauce. Um, and then we have a couple pintos, so likely more for Manitoba, North Dakota markets, but a, both a slow darkening and a non darkening pinto. So major seed increases in 25 and then full commercial launches in 2026. Now, when you're looking at variety development, Paul, and, and what breeders need to consider, um, the, the first thing on your list is, is yield to maturity. You know, why is that so important? Yeah, yield, yield to maturity is is got to be the first thing we look for. Um, growers are always going to pick a variety that matures earlier than the existing varieties if it yields more. Um, we all know how uh, late harvest can bring a lot about a lot of quality issues. And so the earlier we can get crop out of the field, uh, the better quality we'll have. And that's pretty important for the end users. So yield to maturity is very important. Awesome. Hey, and now, now let's let's take a look at that big picture, you know, mm-hmm. from, a, from a plant breeding perspective. You know, what traits are being looked at and, and how does that impact the timeline to bring new varieties to market? Yeah, traits. So traits, when we're talking traits and dry beans, there's nothing that is genetically modified. So we're looking at genes that are the traits that we're looking to introduce. So genetic markers um, are the traits we're looking for. So um, some diseases like common bacterial blight um, and common bean mosaic virus are very well known and to have identified markers. So they're easy to try to uh, DNA test early in the development to see if those markers are contained in the new varieties. Other items like Phytophthora, which are well known in soybeans, are not uh, identified in dry beans at all. So that and, for example, white mold. Um, White mold has no genetic links, no markers that we've identified. So it can take four and five years before those traits are observed in the growing crop. So um, genetic markers are awesome if you can have them and it can speed up the program because you don't have to grow it out to find out whether it's resistant or has those markers or genes in them. Mm. 
white mole, Paul, obviously a, a huge disease for growers. So, you know, how, how do you tackle that from a breeding perspective? Yeah, white mold on the breeding side is very, very difficult. Um, you know, there's no genetic links per se, but we will look at plant architecture. So it's it, it's an avoidance strategy more than anything. Um, get the plant to grow upright. Um, and so that has lots of air movement through the canopy. Um, make sure that it doesn't lodge so that you can harvest it. And, you know, you, you try to avoid white mold versus actually having genetic links that uh, Will, are are tolerant or resistant to it. So it, white mold is definitely a challenge. Mm. Hey, final question for you, and that is about, you know, meeting the needs of a very diverse market here. You know, you've got mm. edible bean growers, you've got end users, you know. It, it's much different than breeding for other crops. Um, when it comes to edible beans, you have yield, maturity, quality, end user acceptance. Hey, that's a big list. It is a big list and, and it's it's challenging when you have all these different market classes. They're all the same species, so sometimes you can get a diverse uh, breeding panel will give you lots of colors and combinations and sizes and shapes. And so once you have identified a variety that has that, that kind of fits a market class, you have to make sure then it, it cooks correctly and, and colors correctly and, and all those diverse things. So just because it... Uh, the end user has to cook it one way or the other. So either it comes in a can cooked or they're going to cook it themselves on the stovetop. So you have to make sure that the bean cooks correctly as well. Well, great stuff, Paul. Hey, we look forward to seeing some new beans emerging from uh, the Hensel uh, pipeline. Uh, always great to have you on the Edible Bean School. Uh, thanks for stopping by. You bet, Byrne. Thanks for having me. Hope to talk again soon.